All right, before we get to the Saturday slate, we're starting under the Friday night lights with some Pac-12 after dark. Washington and UCLA both undefeated at 4-0. The Huskies have turned things around with the nation's best passing offense, while the Bruins riding a seven-game win streak dating back to last season. A couple of our team site experts joining me to break this one down. Chris Fetters for Dogman.com and David Woods for Bruin Report Online. And guys, there's potential for this game to be a contender, pretender type deal. Washington has played a couple of Power 5 teams, though we're not sure how good Michigan State is. Meanwhile, UCLA's biggest opponent was probably Sunbelt team South Alabama. Now the Bruins are about to start a three-game stretch against ranked teams, so this matchup, probably the toughest test for both sides here. Chris, start us off. What's the one thing you're looking for as a measuring stick for these teams as they get into Pac-12 play? Well, you're right that this is a kind of a contender pretender type game because there's a number of things that this will be a first for Washington this season. It'll be the first road game for the Huskies. It'll be the first game that they played on grass. It'll be the first time they played a defense that is at least statistically even remotely comparable with some of the top defenses that they're going to face the rest of the way in the Pac-12. So there's going to be, this is definitely going to be a measuring stick type game for Kalen DeBoer and staff. Now, DeBoer had a lot of success, especially last season for Fresno State, and he had a signature win on the road at the Rose Bowl last year, beating UCLA 40-37 to behind Jake Hayner, a former Washington transfer. So there are a lot of connections, a lot of storylines going into this game. But Washington, is, as well as they're playing undefeated, they've won as many games as they did all of last year. There's still so much that we need to find out about this team. And going on the road right now and being road dogs is a great measuring stick against a very good UCLA team. Yeah, and for UCLA, uh, the big question for me is this defense. Uh, if you're looking at what they've done so far through four games, they've played against teams that largely are completely overmatched or have bad offenses like Colorado this past week. I mean, they they were never going to have much of a chance against this defense, but UCLA's statistics on defense maybe don't tell the whole picture. Uh, that's a very young secondary that UCLA has. Uh, Devin Kirkwood and John Humphrey at cornerback are in their first years starting. Azizi Hearn is a transfer from Wyoming who's playing nickel. Um, these guys don't have a ton of experience in this system. They've been exposed even against some pretty rough passing attacks so far. So their matchup against this Washington passing attack, which is a real tough throw into the fire type game, uh, could be a real, real test for UCLA. Yeah, both the Huskies and Bruins are a bit depleted defensively. Guys, who are the biggest names on the injury report and how does it impact the game david start us off yeah defensive tackle for ucla i mean it's it's easier to account who's healthy than who's injured um the two starting guys from the beginning of the year martin andrus uh, went down with a season and possibly career ending knee injury it's very unfortunate he's a guy who's had uh multiple knee injuries um and if he gets another year it'll be his seventh year in college uh jay toia who's the other starter got hurt last week with what appeared to be a leg injury. Uh, he has not yet practiced this week, so we're not anticipating him being available. And the third guy in the rotation, who was probably the best-looking defensive tackle, uh, transferred from Duke, Gary Smith, also got hurt two weeks ago. Um, so they are down to Jacob Sykes, a Harvard transfer, who is likely going to start, and then Dovid Magna, who is a former walk-on, is more than likely going to start at defensive tackle in this game. Yeah, and for Washington, it's interesting because they're trying to replace two NFL cornerbacks in Trent McDuffie and Kyler Gordon, and the two guys that were their week one cornerbacks in Jordan Perryman and uh, Michelle Powell are were both out against Stanford last week. In fact, Perryman's been out since getting hurt in week one against Kent State, and so they had to rotate and use some other guys. Uh, Julius Irvin, a longtime safety, was moved to corner during fall camp, and that's worked out pretty well, but they've even had to bump up a true freshman from Houston, Javion Green, who's really responded well to the challenge. Uh, Asa Turner, one of their top safeties, it was out against Stanford. Kalen DeBoer said uh, this week that he is going to be out for the UCLA game. And so they've had to rotate one of their Huskies, one of their hybrid safety linebacker types in Cameron Fabiculan, and 
and he will be the matchup safety along with Alex Cook back there. And then, um, you know, there, there's still, a, you know, Perryman may be available. It's going to probably be a game time decision for the UCLA game. But again, Michelle Powell is, is, is going to be out. Uh, Aza Turner, maybe a 50, 50 choice, probably more likely out than not. Um, but all the, all the injuries right now have been on the defensive side of the ball for Washington. Well, guys, we all know about the stellar year Michael Penix Jr. is having and for UCLA, I think everyone's still trying to get over the fact that a basketball school is putting people to shame on the gridiron. But beyond those headlines, what's the one aspect of this game that no one's talking about, but they really should be? Chris? Well, I think, to be honest with you, I mean, with both teams undefeated, again, we go back to it's a great benchmark game for both teams. Both have a lot to prove. Uh, you know, again, for Washington's point of view, yes, Michael Penix, the Indiana transfer, has been uh, nothing short of phenomenal and the receivers that he's been using, Roma Dunsey, Jalen McMillan, Taj Davis, Giles Jackson, Jalen Polk, all these guys have been ridiculously good so far. And, you know, the, the, the matchup of Kalen DeBoer bringing his offense from Fresno State along with his offensive coordinator, Ryan Grubb, they've really worked some miracles compared, uh, considering how poorly Washington's offense did last year. So the turnaround on that has been remarkable. But again, they have not faced a defense like what they're going to face with UCLA under the bright lights on a Friday night, national television, on the road, on grass. There's a lot that still needs to be figured out about this Washington, uh, this Washington program as they continue to try to go 1-0, which has been their mantra all season long. Yeah, and for UCLA, I think the, the number one aspect of this matchup that I think is flying a little bit under the radar is UCLA's offensive tackles um, against what is the first really credible pass rush that they've faced. Uh, again, none of the competition UCLA's faced to this point is really top quality by any measure. South Alabama is probably the best team they've played, and they're a Sunbelt team. Uh, Washington has really, really good edge play, and UCLA's offensive tackles are a Rutgers transfer and Raekwon O'Neal uh, at left tackle, and then Garrett DiGiorgio, who played in one game last year at right tackle. We still don't real have real data on them through four games because they haven't really played anyone who's a real threat. This team will be a real threat, and if the tackles hold up, that's a great sign for UCLA's future over the next eight games, seven games. Um, but if they don't, then <clears throat> that's a warning sign going into particularly teams like USC that have shown such a propensity for sacking the quarterback. So in another way, this is a litmus test for uh, UCLA's offensive tackles. All right, Washington, UCLA, one team will be served its first loss tonight. But hey, Noel's here in studio with these guys, Chris and David. Thanks for your time. And for more coverage on this game, check us out at dogman.com and Bruin Report online.